Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to discuss another C++ 20 feature. I've been just wanting to talk about this one for so incredibly long, and again, finally, GCC trunk version here supports a C++ 20. Uh, we've got Visual Studio and GCC that both support this one at the moment. And that is standard bitcast. Now, standard bitcast is designed partially to solve the problems that I talked about in my stop using reinterpret cast video. So if you haven't watched that one, I do suggest that you watch it. This has also got some interesting implications for the video and discussion that I had on a standard next after. So next after here is a standard library utility that given a floating point value and a direction in which you want to go, it will give you the next value after that one using the smallest increment possible. And if you know anything about floating point representations, then you know that you pretty much just want to increment this fraction part here. And that would be a way to do it, but there's all kinds of edge cases and corner cases and such. But it, if you don't have access to the standard library or whatever, and you just want to do something like this, then you might find yourself like this viewer of C++ Weekly who said, before learning about this, I would have just used type punning. Now, this type punning example is not actually valid in C++, and that goes back to this C++ Weekly episode that I was talking about. I don't know if it's actually technically valid in C or not either because of strict aliasing rules that exist in both languages, but let's just go ahead and plug in this option right here. Uh, and because I have my warnings and errors turned up so high, I get all kinds of strict aliasing warnings and such here. So let's go ahead and turn off these uh, W error. We're still going to see what the warnings are. And let's see what this kind of output is that we get. All right, so I have these two different values being printed, and all this does, this code is incrementing the value, treating this floating point number as an integer, but then we're getting all kinds of double conversions and stuff here because this is a double. Let's just go ahead and make that F, or yeah, let's, let's do that. So a float is 32-bit int, or 32-bit value on most platforms. Int is 32-bit value on all platforms that I know of today. And so this is just saying, if this thing is greater than zero, then I want to add one to it. If it's not greater than zero, then I want to subtract one from it. So this is greater than zero, so it's adding one in the least significant digit by casting this to an int pointer. And again, this is breaking all kinds of tight pining rules and strict aliasing and such, but we are in fact getting some sort of a change here. Now let's go ahead and use this, use bitcast to do the same thing. So this is okay, I, I want to do an int here. And I'm just saying, take the bits that are inside this floating point value and copy them into an integer. That's all that it's asking it to do here. And then I want to go ahead and do a, I'm going to make this I actually, I want to do an increment or a decrement of that. And I'm going to do that using this same little ternary because why not? So I'm now actually going to go ahead and call these functions. I've got full optimizations turned on with 03, and we can see that we do in fact get the same results with both versions. And the difference being that this one doesn't have undefined behavior in it, and um, this one does have undefined behavior in it. We are not allowed to do type punning. We're not allowed to say, hey, this blob of bits over here that you think is a float I'm going to go ahead and treat that as an int. That's just not allowed. Now, if we wanted to do this before we had bitcast, but in a legal way, what we would have to do is this. Let's see, actually. 
I'm going to start with this version. Okay, there we have the three versions. I'm doing the C style one, the C 20 bit cast, and the mem copy, which has been valid for the entire length of C. And I copied it into the wrong memory location. There we go. So uh, we get the same exact results in each case. Now, the thing that you're probably wondering about is what does the actual assembly look like? So um, not a whole lot going on here. We can just see that we've got a couple of values being set up. Here's our two floating point values. So with the C style cast, the compiler did it all at compile time. And with the mem copy, the compiler did it all at compile time. And with bit cast, the compiler did it all at compile time. So really, why do we care about this? And there's one really, really important distinction that we don't get. This code is not allowed in const expr. We can't do a reinterpret cast. That is effectively what this is doing. This code is not allowed in const expr. We can't do a mem copy. But this code, bit cast, bit cast is special. It is allowed to be done at const expr time. So this actually gives us all kinds of tricks for doing things like all kinds of uh, trigonometric fast optimization kinds of things, things that would have required doing a reinterpret cast style or a C style cast in the past to get to the kind of performance and behavior that we wanted, we can do in a bit cast now and the compiler will just do that under the uh, covers for us and behind the scenes and it'll do it as a const expr function. So as we can see here, this is in fact const expr. There are caveats, of course, these things must be trivially copyable, they must be non-volatile, they must not be pointers, or they must be non-volatile, that is, they must not be union types, but this is going to help out a lot with various const expr things and also just with correctness because you just can't convince people to write the mem copy code, but maybe we can convince people to use the bitcast versions. Now, on, as an aside, I don't have a specific example to show here, but there are definitely real platforms being manufactured today where if you were to do a reinterpret cast that resulted in an unaligned read or write to memory, then that's going to cause a hardware fault. So this isn't just academic. And if your compiler is going to do any sort of optimizations around the types being passed around uh, with pointer values, then it's also possible that the compiler, uh, that well, your code's broken regardless, but it's possible that a compiler optimization might show the fact that your code is broken. So uh, something to be aware of. And um, thank you again for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you liked it. Be sure to subscribe.